Diane Sawyer. Good evening and welcome to primetime, where a little laryngitis never stopped us. Did you know that more teenagers die in traffic accidents than any other cause? Each year, 6,300 teens die on the road, and that's an average of 17 every day. With those numbers in mind, Chief Correspondent Chris Wallace led a primetime experiment to see if he could find out more of what's going wrong. Chris? Diane, in 25 states, kids can get their driver's license at age 16. But more and more experts say that's just too young. They point to the fact that in the vast majority of accidents that kill teenagers, there's no alcohol or bad weather involved. It's just inexperience, poor decision making. We decided to see what happens when parents give their kids the key to the car. Some did just fine, but not everyone. It's every parent's nightmare, teenagers behind the wheel. Watch as the 16-year-old driving this car runs right through a red light and almost hits someone. It's even worse inside the car. While her friends are terrified, the driver has no idea she's done anything wrong. It's one of many frightening moments during a primetime experiment. We wanted to find out how prepared kids are when they get their license at age 16. So we followed them, and we rode with them, like this girl known for driving fast. You have a nickname, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's Turbo. that? Turbo. Pardon? Turbo. But most of all, we watched. We installed small cameras in their cars to see what they do after school on Saturday night. They knew the cameras were there, and sometimes it altered their behavior. But most of the time, it didn't. The girl at the wheel is Amy Persinger. When we met her last October, the 16-year-old had been driving for nine months. But her parents still weren't too happy about it. Well, I mean, we were ready to let her drive by herself, but you know, it was never a really comfortable feeling. You always worry when she's out on the road. I worried when I let her go the first time. I felt like I was holding my breath. I wanted her to call me whenever she got to her friend's house. But you still let her go? Yes, I did. At some point, you know, they have to go off by themselves. Amy, how good a driver are you? <laughs> um, I don't think I'm horrible. I mean, I don't think I'm good by any means. I don't think I'm, like, awful. So you're somewhere between good and not horrible, right? right? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the Persingers agreed to participate in our project to see how Amy compares to other drivers. So we found ourselves one Saturday night following Amy and her seven friends to the homecoming dance. She is running late. Right away, she runs a light, turning red. Oh, well, sorry. And down the road, she never sees two stop signs. Yes, Whoops. That's on TV. <laughs> Driving conditions in a steady rain are pretty bad. But Amy stays over the speed limit. Here, she's doing 50 in a 40-mile-per-hour zone. And our driver has a hard time keeping up. Well, she's definitely got a nice bad foot. We go out with Amy again on Halloween as she drives some friends home from school. Here, she's in a 45 mile per hour zone doing 60. At this intersection, she does come to a full stop. But then she turns past a school bus that stops with lights flashing. But two minutes later, all's forgotten when they get to a friend's house. <laughs> For all the mistakes, nobody gets hurt. But we're not sure Amy's parents are going to think it's so funny. We have a tape of some of the highlights of Amy's great adventure. Do you want to take a look? Sure. Sure. Now, here you are. There's a school bus stop, flashing lights, and you make a turn. I didn't know what to do. Well, you're not supposed to move. Oh. It was a rainy night. And you were generally about 10 or 15 miles per hour over the speed limit. All night. I was? Yeah. Oh, boy. So, uh, what do you think? Well, she's a lot worse than I thought. The number of times that she tended to look away from the road, take her eyes off the road, I think that's something she needs to be talked to about and needs to be more careful about. We didn't intend to start a family feud, but 
Are you worried about what we're going to do later? Yeah. <laughs> so would I. Are most 16-year-olds mature enough and experienced enough to drive without supervision? No, I don't think so at all. Mark Edwards is safety director for AAA, the American Automobile Association, that has made teen driving its number one priority. He says it's a public health crisis. More so than AIDS, uh, violence, and drug abuse, all those things that we fear, all of those added together don't equal the number of deaths that teenagers experience each year in automobiles. I can remember the impact. Rachel Webb sometimes wonders whether she was ready to drive the night she made a fatal mistake. She was taking friends home two summers ago in Boca Raton, Florida. She'd had her license for two months when she turned into the path of another car. I didn't see her. I honestly did not see her. Heather Brady was riding in Rachel's car. She was badly injured. Her brother Brian and best friend Shannon Walker, both 15, were killed. Brian was my protector and Shannon was my friend. And I hung out with him every night and then just one night they're gone a year and a half later brian's mother donna says it hasn't gotten any easier every day i wake up first thing i think about is brian every time i go to sleep i think about brian you know the uh we're not happy no matter what we try to do we're not happy sometimes i say well if i wouldn't have met him i wouldn't have ruined their lives do you feel in some sense your childhood ended there yeah by not licensing 16-year-olds, we can save 1,500 lives a year. Dr. Lawrence D'Angelo of Children's National Medical Center talks to parents about teen driving. And he says 16 may be the worst age for kids to get their licenses. At that point, he says, most are in their growth spurt, when they literally outgrow their central nervous system. Their eye-hand coordination and their other fine motor skills uh, are less adept uh, when they're in the middle of their growth spurt than they are uh, before or after. And at 16, D'Angelo says, it's not just physical, but psychological. What happens when a parent tells a 16-year-old to slow down or keep your eye on the road is that often that 16-year-old tunes their parent out and does just the opposite. So all of the problems with adolescents are being played out inside the car. Absolutely. And it's a terrible place for adolescents to act out their rebellion. I wanted it like the minute I turned 16. Lauren Hospital couldn't wait to get her license. Now she says she won't drive with her parents, Joe and Bev, because they are too picky. I mean, you can't follow everything like all the time. There's going to be a little slip up here and there. They make me nervous. And Bev, how do you feel when she says? Nervous. I mean, a little slip up could be <laughs> death. The biggest argument within the family. Definitely drives too fast. Sure. Do you drive too fast? Well, yeah, I, not too fast. I mean, everyone drives a little. No one really does the actual speed limit. <laughs> that is not fair. The parents joined our experiment because they wanted to see how Lauren drives. She said having had her license five months, she had nothing to hide. So we follow her one day on her way to a tennis match. By the way, the girl in the passenger seat clipped a park school bus that morning. Right away, Lauren is tailgating the car in front of her going 50 in a 40 mile per hour zone. But she's more concerned about us. When Lauren makes a left hand turn, she does a good job of using her blinker. But then she's off. The speed limit in this residential neighborhood is 25. As you see, we're doing 40 and Lauren is leaving us way behind. Later, some teenage boys drive up and start hassling the girls. Watch as they make an illegal U-turn right in front of her. Oh my, oh my god! god. Oh, that's we got this one on camera. The tennis match is about 10 miles from home, and Lauren is late and lost. Listen to the confusion in the car. I have no idea. Two miles. Miles. Has it been two miles? No. I, I can't no. tell anything. <laughs> Lauren is so distracted that she never sees that red light. And there's the red light. What do you think? <laughs> Pretty scary. Yeah, it is scary. Lauren? Um, doesn't seem like that bad. You, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> we need to talk. Well, 
I, I think we need to. I, I think it's uh, unacceptable to drive <laughs> 15 miles over the speed limit. In a residential area? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we brought this family together. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have done this if they were going to be all mad and take away my driving privileges. Oh, you'll get a ticket for violating... AAA has some ideas about how to get teens to drive better. First of all, give them more training. In many states, they need only six hours of road instruction to pass driver's ed. Edward says that's not enough. What would be a bare minimum? Well, I think more along the lines of, of uh, 40, 50, 60 hours, maybe even more. Drive ahead and I'll give you instructions where to go. Yes, sir. The dreaded driver's test doesn't do much either. Checking whether teens can parallel park, but not whether they can drive on a highway. There's 25, 30, 35, you're going to go to the left. There are some courses that teach new drivers more real-life situations, such as the kind of maneuvers that can save their lives. Now we're in a real accident avoidance situation. But AAA's main solution is graduated licenses. That 16-year-olds should not be able to drive at night or with other kids in the car. As they go without accidents or tickets, the restrictions would be removed. You seem to be saying we need to change the way that we teach our children to drive. You betcha. That's exactly what we're saying. The biggest step, though, is to get teenagers' attention. Rachel Webb had to learn for herself how easy it is to make a tragic mistake. What would you tell other 16-year-olds? I said, don't be so excited to drive. That it's not a right, it's a privilege. Don't take it for granted. Will teenagers listen? We wondered what the kids who were part of our project had learned. You gonna do anything differently? No. <laughs> Probably not. Experts we talk with say there are a few ways to help make your kids more responsible drivers. One is that they should own part of the driving process, such as paying for their driver's ed or part of their insurance. But don't put a car in your child's name. The accident rate is much lower when kids have to borrow their parents' car. Finally, even after teens get their license, an adult should drive with them the first 500 miles. We'll be right back.